Hello, and welcome to Storytime Treehouse. Today's story is Tales from Fern Hollow, Mrs. Merryweather's Letter. Today's special guest is Elsa. Hello, Elsa. Today's story is going to take us into a town called Fern Hollow. This is a map of Fern Hollow. See all the different houses? Does your town look like Fern Hollow? Mrs. Mary Weathers' letter is written and illustrated by John Patience. Remember, written means that they wrote the words, and illustrated means that they made the pictures. Mrs. Merriweather, who lived in Poppletown, had just finished writing a long letter to her friend in Fern Hollow. She signed the letter with the flourish of her quill pen. Your very dear friend, Matilda Merriweather. P.S. The weather here is wonderful. It's raining cats and dogs. Putting up her umbrella, the happy duck splashed her way along the street to the mailbox. The raindrops made little bubbles in the puddles, and from the oil from the traffic made the rainbow patterns in the streams, which ran down the gutters. Mrs. Merriweather began to sing. Quack, quack. The rain pours down. This is the weather for me. Let it patter and pour and drizzle galore and a happy duck I shall be. Off you go, she said, popping the letter into the box, and she waddled back home again. By the next morning, Mrs. Merriweather's letter was in Mr. Periwinkle's mailbag, along with all the other letters he had to deliver. The weather in Fern Hollow was very windy, and Mr. Periwinkle was having considerable trouble in pedaling his bicycle. Suddenly, as he turned the corner by Boris Blink's bookshop, a great gust of wind caught the corner of the letter and blew him over. The letter spilled out of his bag and blew down the street. The poor postman hurried after them and managed to catch all but one. And that was Mrs. Merriweather's letter. Away it sailed, high over the rooftops. At the watermill, Mr. Croker was busy loading his barge with sacks of flour, which he would later take to Poppletown. The most difficult part of the job was walking along the plank from the river bank onto the barge. This required a, a good sense of balance. Unfortunately, Mr. Croker completely lost his when Mrs. Merriweather's letter blew right by his nose. Thinking the letter would be something important, Mr. Croker made a snatch at it. And the next moment, he found himself in the river. Mrs. Merriweather's letter seemed to hover above him for a second, and then it danced away on the wind over the tops of the trees. Farmer Bramble emptied the bucket of swill into the pig's trough. Eat up, he said. Grunting with pleasure, the pigs began to gobble up the food. Just then, out of the corner of his eye, Farmer Bram Bramble caught the sight of something fluttering by. It was Mrs. Mary Weather's letter. I wonder what that's for, he cried. Leaping over the wall of the sty, he grabbed a pitchfork and ran after the letter, trying to catch it on the prongs of the fork. But 
Farmer Bramble quickly ran out of breath and puffed his way back to the pigsty, where he found he had left the gate open and all the pigs had run away. Mr. Chips was busy painting the front of Brock's Gruffy shop. When along came Sigmund Swamp, who was in rather a daydreamy sort of mood, Sigmund didn't notice Mr. Chips and walked right under his ladder. That was very unlucky. At that moment, Mrs. Merriweather's letter came floating by and blew right into Mr. Chip's face. The startled beaver almost slipped off his ladder and dropped his can of paint, which fell with a great blue splash on top of Sigmund's head. All that day, Mrs. Merriweather's letter blew around the village. Lots of people tried to catch it, but no one succeeded. At last, as evening came, the wind dropped, and the letter fluttered down to rest onto a bird's nest. The bird itself was fast asleep and didn't notice the letter slip quietly in beside it. When the bird woke up the next morning, it was very annoyed to see the letter cluttered up in its nest and quickly tossed it out. Airborne again, Mrs. Merriweather's letter went fluttering over the railway station, where just then a train was arriving. And who should step out of one of the carriages but Mrs. Merriweather? The duck didn't notice her letter flying by, but handed her ticket to Mr. Twinkle and waddled out of the station. Mrs. Willowbank was up to her elbows in soapy water as she scrubbed away at her laundry. Suddenly, through the open window, in blew Mrs. Mary Weather's letter. Mrs. Willowbank picked up the letter and saw that it was addressed to her. It's from Matilda, she cried, reading the letter. She's coming to visit me this morning. As she spoke, there was a knock at the door. It was Mrs. Merriweather herself. I see you got my letter, she said. Yes, replied Mrs. Willowbank. It arrived by air mail. Soon the two friends were sharing a pot of tea and a lovely plum cake and wondering how on earth the letter had managed to deliver itself without any help from the postman. The End So this is Storytime Treehouse. If you like this video, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time.